corpus.quran.com. Uh, this is the this is the ayah that I was referring. Um, it's still it's going to be fine here, isn't it, Baba? Let me just try. Yeah. But if I zoom in, it's going to mess up the the OBS, isn't it? Make it smaller. Don't make it smaller. Okay, I can do that. Well. Make it smaller. Come on. Come on, Um, and it made me appreciate what the, the what my mum and dad did with us teaching us Arabic because there was these resources were not around nowadays. They did a really good job with what very little resources they had at the time. So, okay, let's get straight into it, inshallah. So this is the ayah. Um, I was, I think I was memorizing it at the time. Um, so all of these words, you can see, have a fatha on them. And then in the middle, you've got a kasr on asbat. And I asked my friend, like, why is that? And he gave an answer because he knew, but it didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. So my job today is to make it real, to explain it and not to t take very long doing so. Okay. So let me ask this question. If you had this object now, okay, this object here, how could we categorize it? Okay, so this object is, you, I'll say, mention it, it's a word. But how could we categorize it? That's a question for, for, for you guys and, and, and ladies. Yes? Thing you can touch. Okay, anything else? Break, no, no, no. break a window. Hmm? Shape. Color. Color? Shape. And then something else we're looking for. Shape. Shape. Okay, like one? Toy, yeah. So I, those are the two things I was looking for. Color and toy, yeah? So... This is all we need to get a really good understanding. If you have these three steps, if you're using corpus.quran.com, you can understand Arabic. Okay, because corpus.quran will do all the work for you. Okay, as long as you understand these three concepts. This is what this is built on. Number one is that we categorize every word based on its type. So this type, the type of object is a toy. Okay, and then we categorize it based on its color. Based on these two things... Follow step number three, which is then we put it into the appropriate box because we're basically trying to tidy up a messy bedroom. OK, so this is the messy bedroom. There's all these objects and we need to tidy it up because it's messy. Yeah. Obviously, Omar doesn't have a messy bedroom, so he doesn't know what we're talking about. But most teenagers probably and children do. Yeah. So they need it to be tidy. OK, so we're going to tidy up. So we're going to categorize this based on color and type. OK, so step number one. We categorize these. We've got food, and we've got toys, stationery, sports equipment, clothes, and electronics. Okay? You've also noticed that they're categorized based on color. Okay? Now, step number two is because uh, the, the color, to explain to you what the color is, there's three colors. There's radiant red, navy blue, and joyful green. And then there's things that's giving them color. Yeah? So you've got red crayon, red highlighter, red paintball gun, red fountain pen, red coloring pencil, red spray can. Yeah. So there's six red ones. I was in. The, I was waiting for uh, um, my wife, who just had a hospital appointment, so I had to think of 30 ways to color things in. Yeah. So then you've got 13 blue coloring tools. Yeah. Decorating brush, board pen, blue stamp, chalk, uh, felt fine tip pen. You get the points. Yeah. So there's there's a bit more blue. There's 13, okay? But you've only got two green. There's only two green. A green ballpoint pen and a green artist brush, okay? And then you've got something called the followers, which is the photocopy of the camera, the tracing paper, and the scanner. Okay, now you're probably thinking, what's this got to do with Arabic? That's the next step, inshallah. So we're going to tie this in with Arabic, okay? Oh, and just to mention, there are nine boxes, okay, based on their color, and type will determine in which of the nine boxes that these items go into. Okay? So now let's apply this to Arabic, inshallah. Yeah? So, the items have two types. Type A and type B. Type A is what we call mabni. Okay? So now we're starting to introduce some Arabic terms. Yeah? It's indeclinable. Basically, they color. You can color them, but the color won't show. If you color a grape with a highlighter, it's just going to wash off and go. Yeah? It does have a color... But it just won't show. That's what we call mabni. Okay? The beautiful thing about this, these are words that will never change. They're always going to look the same. Okay? And then you've got something called mu'rab, okay? which is type B. And this is where 
the categories, we're going to link them in with Arabic now. So you've got singular words. The toys are singular words. Yeah. Type B2 is broken plural. Basically, this is a pro uh, usually plural is it has an on or an at at the end. We're going to cover that in a second. But there's a category of plural that doesn't have that. You break the word in the middle and you put something in the middle. That's what's called broken. Um, and it's now plural. Yeah. So it's, a it's called a broken plural. Yeah. B3 is uh, dual words. So in Arabic, you have words that refer to two. Yeah. And then uh, B4 is masculine plural. So you can have feminine plural, you can have masculine plural. Okay. And I've given examples here like Mansurun, for example. And then you have feminine plural words. Okay. So now we've seen how we had objects that we could understand the messy bedroom. But these are then categorized into these uh, either type A, which is Mabni, words that don't change, or type B. And there are six type Bs. The last one is what we call diptotes, yeah, the aliens. These are like unusual words, yeah, mamnu' min as-saf, okay. And then there's there's that. So these are the six main types, okay. Now, type number two, step number two, sorry, was to identify its color, and we said that they have coloring tools. Now I'm going to give you the Arabic equivalent for the coloring tools that I talked about. Okay, so the red crayon is a subject doer. Now you might think, I don't really know what a subject doer is. The way we're going to learn this is through examples. Yeah, we're going to learn it through examples. Because I said, we're going to be light on the theory, heavy on the examples. And examples from surahs that you've memorized and you know. Okay, so don't worry if I don't fully understand it. That's the point. Because what happens typically, and I'm not criticizing anybody who teaches Arabic. They're all amazing, mashallah. I benefited a lot from them. But... There is a, a lot of emphasis on the theory, and then the examples come a little bit at the end. Yeah, Osman used to attend the classes that we. Had, it, it, I don't know if you agree with me, Talha as well. Yeah, so there was some examples and uh, more recent versions of these courses. Um, what our teachers have done is they've incorporated more examples because we learn much easier through examples. Okay, so um, you've got the subject doer. The object whose subject is not mentioned. I'm not going to go through these now. I'm going to go through them in the examples, inshallah. Okay? But I just want you to get a flavor. Okay? They're painting things red. That's what they're doing to the words. When something is a nominal subject or a, pred a, pred a pred predicate, it's coloring that word in red. And then if it, you look at its type, is it a singular word? Da, 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 and then based on that, you put it in the right box. Okay? So you can do the same for all of these. Yeah, like I said, we're going to come back to them in the examples, but just have a look as we're going through. Just read the, the words. OK, some of them, I think the cognate object, I think it just scares people a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people struggling with Arabic is that they're just a bit scared of these fancy words. OK, um, the adverbial adverbial of time. And I saw this with kids. Like if you say this to a kid, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. So you, when you say to them a, a blue chalk or blue stamp, they don't do that. Yeah. OK, so we're going to go to just quickly flick through these. And then um, these are the photocopiers. So there's four photocopiers, which is an adjective, a conjunction, emphasis and substitution. These will apply to red, blue and green. OK. I want to get to the examples as quickly as possible. So I'm just scrolling through these quickly. OK. And then based on these, you put them in the right box. So the word at the, the, the boxes are. Either put a dhamma at the end, fatha at the end, kasra at the end, or a fatha and an alif, a dhamma and a waw and a kasra and a ya, or a fatha and an alif maqsura, a kasra and a ya with a shadd on it and a fatha, or a kasra with a ya and a fatha on it. Now, let's bring this together with our examples. So, you've got this here, the toy. We said it's a, it's, it's a singular word, it's a toy. What happens is that it gets coloured. By the red crayon, it becomes red, so therefore you put a dhamma at the end. Okay? The same here, you could color it in blue, and then you put it into the box with the fatha at the end. Okay? Or you could color it in green. Okay? So what happens here, these, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, go straight to an example, and then come back to this, inshallah, because I think that's, I don't want to spend too long on the theory. So, 
let's take our example, asbat. Okay? So this word asbat, first of all, because this, this was the original thing that I was saying that put me off. Okay? This word, by looking at the translation, we can work out it is a plural. Okay? Because it doesn't have un or at at the end, it's, it's a broken plural. Okay, because if it's un or at, then it's a, a normal plural, but it's not. So, it's, so we know it's a broken plural. So number one, we know it's a broken plural. Then, we look at the actual word itself. Now, on, this is where corpus.quran really helps. Because corpus.quran will tell you that it is majroor. Can you see how it says here majroor? This is the armband. Okay, can we see the armband? First of all, it's giving you a translation, so you work out what type it is. Secondly, it's going to tell you it's majroor. So because it's majroor, it's going to get coloured in green. Yeah? But we're not looking at Ibrahim, we're looking at Aspart. So Aspart is actually um, a, a, a follower. It just follows. You just follow back. Which word does it follow? Back All the way back here. If it just copies Ibrahim. Yeah? Ibrahim has majroor. And Aspart here is just copying Ibrahim. So we know that this word is also green. Okay? So because it's green, it has a kasra at the end. Okay? And we'll go back. Because when we, when we had our boxes here, okay, the, what it says here is, um, okay, so the broken plural, if it's a broken plural and it's green, we put a kasra at the end. It goes into the kasra box. Yeah? And, and that's this the, the, the learning takes place through the examples. Okay? So we take the, another one. We take Yaqub. Yaqub here is a singular word. It's a singular word. Mm -hmm. But if you click, um, uh, Corpus actually tells us it is a diptote because it says here, can you see that? Mamnu' min as So if we go back here, so we know it's a, um, a singular word. And we know here that it's, it's, in, it's colored in green because of, it's the, the same as the one we just did. We said here it's copying this one. So when we go back to our, our box here, it says if it's green and it's a, and it's a diptote, you put a fatah at the end. Yeah? So that's why I had a fatah at the end. Okay? Let me just go back to it. That's why I had a fatah at the end. Okay? It's natural, it's natural not to fully get that now. We've only spent, what, 15, 20 minutes on it. But if we do 100 examples, if we do 200 examples, if you go through the Qur'an like this, I do feel that you'll, there'll come a point where it starts to make sense. Okay? And because there's a lot of repetition, a lot of repetition, because maybe in a more traditional class, you will do this, but then you'll do lots of other things as well. So there's not as much repetition of this, this, the core concept. Okay? Whereas we're doing a lot of repetition. So... Let's take another example here. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Why does this have a kasra on it? Why does rabb here have a kasra on it? Rabb here have a fatha on it. And then rabb here have a dhamma on it. So this is, this is Surah Quraysh. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ This is Surah Al-Takweer. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ Okay, so why? Well, same principle. This rabb here, it's followed by a preposition. Yeah? So because it's followed by a preposition, it's going to get colored in green because it's majroor. Yeah? Again, if you actually went onto the corpus website, it would actually have the word majroor written underneath it. Yeah? So because it's majroor, it's colored in green, we go back to our table here. It's a singular word. I need to learn these page numbers. Here we go. It's a singular word, which is here. Okay. So it's a singular word, a singular word, and it's coloured in green. So we put a a kasra at the end. Yeah. Let me go straight down to the the full example. That was too far. So I want to I want to just focus on examples. Here we go. Okay, this is where it gets a bit more enjoyable. So I've tried to pull out lots of examples for everything. Yeah. Okay. So let's do let's do um, 
the red crayon. Okay, so a verbal subject do. So this is we're going to go to the corp the corpus website. Oh no, it's going to. I don't want to do that. In a new tab, yeah. Okay, just bear with me a second. Now, a disadvantage of this approach, because we're going through this quickly, you haven't had time to absorb it, yeah? Or really think about it. And there's going to be things that have gone over your head, okay? But, but allow that, because we're going to go through examples. So we're going to do examples, maybe do one from some of the main categories, just to get a, to a sense for how this works, yeah? So I think we need to do a new tab, okay? So it says here... It says here that this is this word here, Nasr, is the subject doer. It's okay. doing the verb. Okay? So that's why it's colored in red. Yeah? What I'll do, let me just open this up in another tab to stop us flipping back and forth. Okay, so this word here, Nasr, what's its type? What type of word is it? Let's see who, who can, who's, uh, who's not falling asleep. Yeah? What type of word is it? Is it a singular word? Is it a plural word? Is it a dual word? Singular. It's a singular word. Good. Okay? So because it's a singular word, it's in this category. Okay? Now, that's step number one. Step number two is what color is it? How do we work that out? Well, it says here, it says fail. Okay, fa'il is the subject doer. It colors things in red. Yeah, red. So we know that it's red. So because it's red, it's this one here. So it has a, a dhamma at the end. Okay, can you see how it has a dhamma at the end? Nasr. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do this one. Oh no, I keep forgetting. I need to be disciplined with this because this just going back and forth, I think it's going to make us tired. Okay, let's do another example. Walfat, walfat. What's the type? What's the type of word this is? Is it singular, dual, plural? It's also singular. Okay. Now, what is, is, what's it saying that it is? It's saying it's ma'tuf. Can you remember what ma'tuf is? What colour? Is it red, blue or green? <laughs> ah, that's a trick question, yeah? This one was, um, it's in the category of the followers. So it doesn't have a colour, it just follows... Is in the category here. See here, Maltov? Mm. It's a camera. It just copies the other one. So it's copying. What word is it copying? Mm. Nasr. So Nasr was what? What color? Red. Red, yeah? So this is also red. Red, okay? Which is why red, singular, what do we put at the end of it? We put a? Dhamma at the end of it, okay? Good. Let's keep going, yeah? Because you know what, you get a dopamine release because you know the ayah and you kind of know now what, it, what, what. so ja'a here is doing the word, so nasr is, is the subject of this word ja'a and so is fath, because Allah is saying when the help of Allah comes, it's doing the verb ja'a, okay, let's do some more examples, right, let's do this one, oh. can someone remind me because I give me, <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. So let's open a new tab. So, kafirun. What's wrong with OBS? Sure? Okay, so. No, but it's with all, still within us all the same frame, so it should be okay. So kafirun here, kafirun. What type of word is kafirun? Plural. plural. Now do something different, yeah? Do you think it's a broken plural? 
No, because what do we say about un. un, yeah? Normal plurals have either un or at at the end. This has got un at the end, okay? So we're going to go to a different group now. So it's not these, it's this one here. Scroll down. This one, okay? It's one of these three. So you're either going to put un at the end or one of these. Now, what's corpus telling us? It's telling us that it's also a subject doer. If something's a subject doer, what color is it? Red. So that's why it has un at the end. Okay? Because in the Quran it's not always kafirun. It's sometimes you have kafirin. So I have so here, kafirun, this is in Surah al Surah al Saf. Kariha is the verb and kafirun is doing that verb. Okay? We'll do one more subject doer, then we'll do something else, just to mix it up a little bit. Okay? Oh ya Allah. Stop, stop, stop. It gives you a break from me talking, I suppose. Okay. So let's go. Let's look at that. This one here. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا Yeah? So, ard. What type of word is it? Let me pick people. Uh, no? <laughs> Not really. You're, you're, the, you're really good at this. Yeah, let's see. Someone who's fresh. Um, Alicia, what type? What what type do you think it is? Um, singular. It's singular. Yeah. So it's singular word. So it's going to be the same thing. What what color? Because it's it's still we're still doing fire. What color have we been saying it is? Red. Red. Yeah. So because it's red, it's still the same category, which is this one here has a dhamma at the end. Okay. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was praying Taraweeh and the Imam read Kadabat Qawmu Nuhun Al Mursaleen. So the ayah should be Kadabat Qawmu Nuhin Al Mursaleen. This happened this Ramadan. Okay, which means the people of Nuh denied the messengers. He put a Dhamma on Nuh. He made Nuh a subject doer. He said Nuh denied the messengers. Just, just changing it to a dhamma, okay? Let's do, let's do another example. Uh, let's, let's go to the blues, okay? So if we had like a whole day, we'd do more examples. I, I'm uh, just conscious of time, okay? Mashallah, shukran Omar. Even though I actually remembered this time, but thank you. Okay, so open a new tab. Okay, so this one is coloring in blue, so we're changing it around a little bit, okay? So colouring in blue, we've got this word here. Iyaka. Um, Iyaka. Can you see how it says? It's maf'ul bihi. Okay. This here is al maf'ul bihi. Okay. Which in English means the object. It's the thing that the verb is done to. Okay. So Iyaka here is the is blue. We know that. Now, the other thing is what type of word is it? Do you think it's singular, plural, dual, dual? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Singular. Very good. Okay. So, because it's singular, yeah, and because it's blue, we we uh, yeah. is that right? No, that's not right, is it? No, it's because no, it's cause it's, a, it's, a, it's a, that's mabni. Yaka. Yaka. It's not. Uh, it's not a. Uh, it's not morab, isn't it? It's a detached pronoun, huh? Yeah, but but yeah, yeah, but no, the is the cause the pronoun. Yeah. Let's okay. That's there's a bit more to that one. So let's let's go to the next one. Let's. Oops. Oh, you need to be quick, Omar. Huh? Because whilst it actually fits the framework, but it's not correct. Yeah. So we'll we'll leave that one. Um, okay, so here the one I found was this one, Naran. Sayasla Naran. Okay, it says it's the object. Sayasla Naran. Um, again, who is it? I think. Do I, what do you think? Naran. What type of what type of word is it? A singular as well. Okay, so singular 
and we say it's an object which is colored in blue. We go back to our framework, singular, colored in blue, it has a fatah at the end. Yeah? So this is talking about Abu Lahab, isn't it? Abu Lahab is going to go to the Nar. So that's why it's got a fatah at the end. Yeah? Let's do one of the greens. The greens are the most common in the Quran. The most common in the Quran are the greens. Even though there's two categories, but there's loads of them in the Quran. Yeah? The blues are a bit more technical, but they're not that common. In fact, I only could find one for, I think, Muf'ullahu, I could find like one in the whole Quran. Yeah? So, also, this part of it is kind of like focusing on what comes the most often. What do I do? Open in a new tab. So, for the greens, we've got Majroor. Majroor basically means if it comes after a preposition. Yeah? So, here we've got... Majroor. We've got a couple of majroor. Can you see the, the P here means preposition. So min is a preposition. The other thing about corpus that I love is they just label everything for you. So you don't have to memorize. See, what we usually do, you memorize all the prepositions. And then you memorize all the pronouns. And there's a lot of memorizing and learning. I think what happens to a lot of people is like, us. Oh, too much memorizing and learning and I'll, I'll just go home and watch the football. Yeah? So when everything's labeled for you and stuff, it just gives you that quick dopamine release. Ah, oh, I get it now. I know what's going on. So, Sharri, what do you think? Singular, someone call it out. Singular, easy peasy, yeah? So, singular, and we know it's red. So, again here, singular, oh, sorry, green, sorry, singular, and it's green, so I have a kasra at the end. And lo and behold, Sharri has a kasra on, on, the, on the end. Uqad, what do you think? Yeah? Are you sure? Why is it, what does it say underneath it, Omar? What does that say? Majroor, okay. So again, it's not something to work out, but good, good try, Omar, don't worry about it, yeah? I like that you're trying, so it just says here Majroor, yeah? So that's what I like about corporate, everything's just labeled for you. They've done a third of the Qur'an. Imagine you did this for the third of the Qur'an, how strong the Arabic would be. Because you've just got so many examples, yeah? So many examples. So we know it's Majroor, we know it's a singular word, and as a result of that, it will have um, a kasra at the end, because it's green. Okay? Now, I don't want to spend any more time on this, because we're now 9, nine o'clock. Um, but that would be uh, the approach. We go through lots and lots of examples. Okay? And examples, if you notice, of things that... of surahs that you're familiar with. Yeah? If you know... This, you will, you can attest, I mean, those of you who have done Arabic, yeah? That's a large portion of actually what you would do in a year one, a whole year course, yeah? Um, it just goes into, like, it will go in more detail explaining exactly what, for example, these things are, yeah? The rules for what, like, when, how, like, you, because you, you don't have it labeled for you. You haven't got the armbands. So you need to know... That Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, that Rahman, Rahim are both adjectives. You're supposed to be able to work that out. Am I right? Yeah? But when everything's labeled for you, it's kind of like, don't get thrown in the deep end. It's all labeled for you. So all you need to do is be able to work out what type of word it is and what color it is. The color is what we... Is, is, uh, and even this is the thing about corpus. If you're still 100% sure, you just click on the word... And it actually will say, tell you it's, it's majroor. It's in majroor. Okay? So let's, if we go back to all our examples that we mentioned. Um, da, da, da. Like Nasru. You go in here and it says marfu'. Marfu', so it's rafa. Because I said radiant red rafa, navy blue nasab, and joyful green jar. Yeah? But it will tell, it, tell you. So you don't even need to, you don't need to guess what color it is. But what you need to do is get practice of those surahs that you're, you've memorized, what's happening to what. Now, here's my, my, uh, my proposition to you. You can either carry on attending, because you've been attending my dad, mashallah, for, for many years, many of you, with, uh, with no real kind of understanding of what happen, is happening uh, grammar, grammar and Arabic-wise. And you can carry on, there's no shame in that. But if you start to do a reading of the Qur'an, now, when I'm memorizing Qur'an, I will want to see what's happening in the, in the verse, because it, I don't know, it gives me a deeper connection with the Qur'an. Yeah? So, 
if you have the ability, like, you know, Brother Athar, who's... How many years have you been learning Arabic now? A lot. Yeah? That's the ultimate. Uthman and Talha, others, you know, obviously my dad as well. Yeah? Mudassar. Others, I don't know everybody, but... That's fantastic. But something like this, we could do in a day. Yeah? So I'm thinking of doing a one-day intensive for this. Yeah? Where we can have more time. Obviously, we didn't get a chance to go through verbs. Yeah? But I'll just show you the first page of, uh, page of the verbs bit, because... I didn't have this the last time when we spoke. Just if nobody else, just for, uh, for the other. Okay. So a verb. Here we go. This is my verb thingy. Okay. So a verb is like a human body. Every verb has these components to it. And again, it's all on corpus doc Quran. Yeah. It's just you understanding the framework. So. The core of any verb, it's the head. It's the eyes, the ears, the mouth. Which are the gender, the number, and the person. Okay? Then you've got the right hand and the left hand, which is what we call the voice, if it's an active verb or a passive verb. And then the legs are the tense. Yeah? So it's a past tense verb, present tense, etc. Okay? That's the, now that's uh, one body. Okay? But verbs come in different nationalities. Yeah? Oh, so each verb has its root letters. This is the nationality. So one verb, but it's like, has a slightly different bit to it, attached to it, etc. Okay. And um, then you have, then, then, I'll, I don't want to go through this because I haven't got time. And then verbs can have disability. So if, if one of these letters are in a verb, some funny rules start to apply. Now, the only th thing I want to show you is the example. Because I want to show you how... So, Corpus Quran, for any w verb, you see how it says you, lad, it just tells you the answer. So, it tells you it's third person, masculine, singular, which is the head. Okay? It tells you if it's a passive verb or an active verb. It tells you what tense it is. If it's imperfect, which imperfect means present tense. Yeah? It tells you um, if it's red, you know, because verbs could also be red, blue, or green. Yeah? It does it all for you. It tells you what the root letters are. Yeah? And also, it tells you what form it is as well, although it's not mentioning it here. So, my point is, is just to show you that in a, in a, in a, tr a usual Arabic class, you will learn all these verbs, won't you? Uh, yeah? You learn all the different types of verbs. But when you're using the armbands, you can actually just, um, it'll tell you what the verb is, okay? So it, it's less work in, in the initial stage to get your confidence up and to make you feel that actually this isn't that difficult. And this is the way that I do it with the kids. We, we're not doing it as a separate subject. We're just saying we're learning Qulhuallahu Ahad here. What is Yalid and what is Yulad? Yeah? We're just learning the Arabic of that surah you just read. Yeah? And you do the same with Qur'an the Rabbil Falaq. And you do the same with Qul Allahu Ahad. Okay? And I found it's much better because when I try to teach the kids, my mom said this to me and I, I never realized it until I taught. She said, you have to repeat things with kids so many times. I still remember that when my mom used to tell my brother Ubaid off when we were kids. Okay? She would always say, Okay? I can still remember that vividly, yeah? And that's because we're kids, we're just always forgetting. Okay? So by doing it as part of the Quran, it gives us the opportunity to constantly be repeating it, repeating it, repeating it with, with children. Yeah? And that repetition is hopefully what's gonna um now if you're in the category of somebody who can like an Uthman and go for it, learn all the verb tables, and then you know do it that way, fantastic. You know, that's, that's, that's great. But if you don't have the time and you don't have the ability, just take a surah. As long as you understand what corpus is telling you, this is the thing. What does it mean when it says this is marfur? What does it mean when it says this verb is second person? And that's what I think we could try and achieve in one day. Yeah. So I just wanted to, to kind of get, um, uh, have a go at presenting this in a study circle. Um, but ultimately, I think if you want to do it properly, we probably need more time, inshallah. Um, just before Maghrib comes in, does anyone want to give any feedback? What time is Maghrib?
when you're thinking of doing this, Laura? Depends if there's any interest to go to this. There is. Yeah. I mean, one hour would be not enough. No, it needs a day. It needs a day. I mean, that was really intense. I can tell people are a bit so falling asleep now. So you'd need to space it out. Yeah. yeah? You probably need like a one day course at least. Like yeah. Four day thing. Yeah. And the idea is that you would, the idea is you would repeat that course on one more than one occasion, yeah. So this course isn't going into lots of detail. It's taking the core concepts and repeating it over and over again until you really get it, yeah. And then you can start to, then you can take off the armbands, yeah. yeah? My, um, my, I think it's a great idea. The thing that was maybe bothering me a little bit, and maybe it's because I've not heard it enough times to appreciate this, is that. There's enough for me to try to learn and memorize without having to remember what color these things were. And uh, that, that, that was really... Uh, is this you, when you were doing Arabic or is this now? Just now, yeah. Okay. So and you give me two minutes. You, you asked what finished. color was it and I think you finished. Oh, I don't remember that. The color is red, but kind of Well, guessing. the thing is, corpus labels it, so it tells you what color it is. That's the idea. So you don't need to remember what it is. Right. You just need to get used to seeing what corpus says, mm. going to 